going to lose my This might not even have to be a time lapse, Adam. That's how quick it's going to be. Failing already. Right then, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Overland Touareg video. So far in this series, we have done wheels, we've done tyres, we've done the lift kit and fitted a tent box. Now, we're going to be fitting a light bar to this. So, if you look over here, this is the final bolt-on light bar kit that we've got. It is 100% bolt-on and that is because we have had these stainless left-hand threads custom made and they screw into the standard toe eye points so it literally takes five minutes to fit this obviously there's a little bit more involved when you come to wiring your lights but the bar itself installation five minutes job done likewise we have searched high and low to find a reasonably priced light kit for this there's that many on the market and you can spend well thousands of pounds on four lights which we realise the majority of people are not going to want to spend that. So we've found three versions of lights that will fit with this light bar, ranging from these Orcs Beam, I think they're just short 17,000 lumens for the pair. These Maple ones, which are 8,000 lumens for the pair. And then these smaller Heller uh, value fit ones, which they're 3,000 lumens each, so 6,000 lumens for them. Um, all these are pretty reasonably priced compared to lights such as laser obviously we understand that there's a certain level of quality but we are hoping that we've picked a set of lights that are reliable they'll withstand the test of time and obviously the bright so this is a choice for our v6 we're going to be fitting these orcs beam ones uh, I think on Michael's KN, we're actually going to be fitting the Maple ones and I think our Amarok might get a set of these on, possibly on the back facing backwards. But the options are there, the choice is yours. So, we are going to fit this now and we're going to show you how long it takes. So, this might not even have to be a time lapse Adam, that's how quick it's going to be. I've cheated though, I've already got standard toe covers off. Cheating. I'm failing already. So sometimes, if you've not used the tow hard for a while, the standard threads can be a little bit crusty. But we have cleaned these out once, so it should go in fairly easy. Left hand thread. One side done. So before I actually tighten this one up, a lot of people have asked when we first put the prototype of this up, can you use this to tow off? We wouldn't recommend it, but it's literally a 19 mil. You can undo one side, drop it down a couple of inch, put your standard towing eye in, do your recovery and then reattach your light bar. So. Stop the clock. How long was that, Adam? Uh, it weren't five minutes. <laughs> it weren't five minutes. <laughs> but that's it, job done. Light bar or nudge bar is on. And then it's just a case of choosing your lights and fitting them and wiring them in. So I'm gonna leave that to Harry. Harry's gonna fit the lights, get them wired in, and we'll check back in later on. Not today, because it's 10 to five, but probably tomorrow. And uh, see what they like when they're working.
So we said how we were going to fit these lights, but it's actually Paul's job now. But before Paul cracks on with the installation, I'm just going to go through this little control panel. So the kit for the lights does come with a little rocker switch. You could just fit it with that. But we've got this aux beam uh, control panel, six buttons. So you could technically have six lights or whatever you wanted on there. Comes with a little sticker pack as well, so you can label them up. Also comes with a nice relay and fuse box, which should make installation quite a bit easier. And then obviously we need to mount this in the car somewhere, which is why we have currently got the dash storage box, if that's what you call it. Out of the vehicle, we've got all the 3D scanning stickers on there. Ari's just done a quick scan so we can 3D print a nice little mount in there for the controller on a bit of an angle so it's uh, nice and easy to access and press all the buttons so we'll let Paul crack on with the installation and we'll uh, check back in when these are fitted So Paul's been cracking with the installation, We're still waiting on the 3D printed mount for the dash top, but it's all in and working. Ignition on, pretty cool controller lights. So we've sticking it up as front bumper, one does the outer and then one does the inner, I'm not sure which way around it is yet. And then we've added these windshield lights as well because we're planning on putting some ditch lights on this as well at some point. So let's give it a test. So we'll go front lights first and as you can see quite bright already so they're the centre ones and then we'll press the bumper lights and that's them all on so very bright I'm going to try not to look at them, otherwise I'm going to be seeing four dots for the rest of the day. But yeah, happy with that, how they've come out. We'll have to do a test later on to see how bright they actually are at night. But I don't think there's any denying just from inside the workshop, you can tell how bright they are. Wiring wise, Paul's took each individual wire behind the grill first and then join them all together just so it's a lot neater from up the front. And then they come up and around here into the switch panel box, which if we open that up, they're all connected now. So it's, a, it's a nice little setup, this aux beam box, because you, obviously you've got your power, but then you just have the one cable going to the controller inside the car and then all the other lights or accessories you want to wire up literally just go to this box so it's not like you're constantly running the wires and switches into the car so let's knock them off before it drains the battery off off so this controller as well it is light sensitive so if i just put my finger over that sensor it dims them down so it's not super bright at night Pretty cool. So we'll check back in in a bit when Harry's got this mount 3D printed and have a look at that all installed um, and finalised. You might have noticed that we have sprayed the top of the car with 
the 3D scanning powder. And that is a sign of things to come in the future. So comment below if you can guess what we're going to be designing for that. And then tomorrow, this is going over to Gig for the livery doing. So these temporary Overland stickers are going to be coming off. We're going to do a real livery on this with some new Overland stickers and stuff like that. So we'll check back in tomorrow. Hopefully we've got the mount done inside the car and the livery will be getting done as well. What we made then, Harry? So, we've got the 3D scanner out again. This is the box of the V6 that goes in the dash. And this is our new aux beam controller. So this is for our lights on the front, which uh, well, you'll see them fitted. And from scanning it, we've designed this little panel that will hopefully figure that cable through there. Bit like a glove. Like a glove. So there we go. New panel to go in there for the new lights. We'll get this all secured in and then uh, show you when it's done. So just before we take this round to gig, the light switch is in. So that's a 3D printer part that Harry made. And as you can see, everything's working as it should now. So nice stealth setup. Can't even tell it's there. Magic. So hopefully we should have some more lights or gadgets going in here soon. We can be able to utilize those switches. But yeah, pretty happy with that's turned out. So we've got the designs. We'll not show you too much at the minute, but we've got the designs. We're going to take that round to gig and we'll let them crack on with the wrap. So we're just at graphic innovations around the back of our unit. Tuareg's been dropped off. So we'll let them crack on with that. We'll time lapse the process and we'll check back in tomorrow to see the results. Do you reckon, Adam? That looks mega. I thought you were going to say mental then. Mental. Oh, so there you have it. Back from gig with the Overland graphics. We've got the nice new Overland logo on there. So we should have some smaller versions of those, um, some little stickers that will be on the website soon. And then obviously we've got the, I think you call it like a geo map, like an elevation map. Um, contours, it's not actually of a mountain, but it looks like a mountain map. But yeah, it's, uh, it's come out really well, really happy with it. I think it finishes it off nicely. We've got the full D chrome on there now as well. So all the chrome from the front has gone. All the silver bits that were running along the side, that's all gone. These hella black, black magic ditch lights so they're 3.2 inch we'll get them on there i think that'll finish the uh, the car off pretty nicely and then we'll we'll get them tested so we'll insert that footage that adam's getting now Oh, I'm going to lose my oh, no. oh. 
right, Melly, got all on video. So, got the ditch lights on. Brackets came out pretty well. So these are just the prototype ones. We are going to be having these uh, laser cut and folded. But yeah, I think they, they look pretty good. See what they look like turned on. So these are now wired to the third button that we've got on here. So if we press that. It. So, pretty bright. Happy with how they look. And then, just to finish things off nicely, we've had these 3D printed centre caps made. So, when we first fitted these wheels, they came with a big bulbous centre cap, which we asked if you preferred to look at them with or without the centre cap. A lot of you said without, but it just looks unfinished. So we've had these made. It's got like a nice rubber o-ring on there to hold it in place. And I'm hoping it should. Oh, lovely. Just pop in place. So that looks pretty good. Not a perfect finish on the 3D printed parts, but it'll do. And then these little caps as well. Little dark side caps. We're using these just to finish off the wrong side the light bar. So that again should pop in there if we had two hands. And that just finishes that off nicely as well. So the next part of the video, it's gonna be dark because I want to do a little bit of testing with both sets of lights and see what they look like at night. So I've just finished some work on my own car and as you can probably tell it is quite dark now. So it's half past nine. It's not pitch black outside but this should give you a good idea as to how bright the lights are. So I thought we'd give them a little test. I've got a little light in here just lighting my face up. But if we look outside, so we can't have all the lights off. So they're the daytime running lights. Those are the headlights. That is the main beam. And then if we go to here, so that's one set of lights. That's two set of lights and then the ditch lights as well. So I think they work pretty well. Let's uh, just go and have a take a look. So that's the ditch lights on. Spotlights on. And the high beam on as well. So I think overall they work very well. We'll have to uh, do a bit of night laning now and see what they're like in action. So hopefully you've liked the video. Make sure you click the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks again for watching and we will see you in the next one. I'm not taking any responsibility for that great log, that tree stuff damaging the 36. Yes. Straight down. That's it. Whoa. Whoa.
Whoa! 